Susha? Well, I think every man has their ego. Mm -hmm. And you know, one says, you, some men don't like to be feel less of a man. But then at the same time, them being together, you know, a lot of women, when they're being abused, they always, some of, most of them blame it on themselves. Mm -hmm. Oh, I upset him, or it was my fault. Mm -hmm. Or in some cases, some of them feel like they should, they have to get back with the person because sometimes they love them so much that they can't let go. But why should you be with somebody that abuses you? Just mm -hmm. because you have a child for them? I mean, they could work something out that he could come see the child or every on the weekend or something i know there's lawyers that could you know help them with that problem i don't mm -hmm. think they should be together okay can i add on to that yes Nigel. um also she has a lot of fans that's watching her for her to get back with him and a lot of domestic violence out there now that's say you you have to think about the people watching now if a mm -hmm. girl that's rihanna's fan is with a boyfriend he's beating up on her Rihanna's just saying, get back with him. Mm -hmm. So what is she going to think? Okay. She's going to follow her role. Yeah. Her footsteps. Okay, Jacqueline, here are some statistics <laughs> we've compiled from the U.S. Department of Justice, the Center for Disease Control and Prevention, and Liz Claiborne Teen Dating Violence Survey. Uh, girls and women between the ages of 16 and 24 experience the highest rate of intimate partner violence. Uh, one in five high school girls is physically or sexually hurt by a dating partner. One in three teens experience some kind of abuse in their romantic relationships. And 80% of girls who have been abused continue to date the abuser. Speak on these statistics for us and what kind of signs of abuse can young people look out for? Well, I think first of all, um, they're starting late. We're seeing abuse happening in middle school as young as uh, 9, 10. 11. Um, so although the focus tends to be more on high school students and um, college students, it really is happening as early as middle school. Okay. And um, the slap, the kick, the punch, the physical violence is usually the thing that we can see. Mm -hmm. We know that. Mm -hmm. But emotional abuse is something that you can't right. see. Right. I was just going to ask you about the other types of abuse besides just the physical. Right. Mm -hmm. There's um, emotional abuse, there's sexual abuse. Um, a lot of um, women and men have reported, young people have reported being in relationships where there is a different type of violence. It's not always physical. And sometimes they're so subtle that you don't even know. Mm -hmm. um, it's important that when you're in a relationship with somebody and you feel uncomfortable, that you make a request that you ask the person to stop doing the behavior. If you find that they do stop doing the behavior, then obviously they're listening and they care about you. It's when they continue to do the behavior that's concerning. Because it's not really about whether it's, um, if the intent is to hurt you. If you're feeling hurt, if you're feeling that the person's speaking to you in a way that's derogatory or makes you feel less than, you need to speak up and say something about it. Mm -hmm. Have any of you ladies witnessed any type of yes. abuse? Chanel. I have. Well, me and Naja have, I can say, because we, we had a friend. Mm -hmm. Speak up, so. We had a friend, and like her boyfriend, if they were to argue, and he would come up to the school, he don't, he, he don't go to our school, mm -hmm. but he would come up to the school and get her, and he would be outside waiting, and sometimes he'd be like, just walk away, and then he comes after her and like, pinch her and choke her up, mm -hmm. and then she'd just sit there and say, stop, stop, and I'd be like, just, I'd be, sometimes I'd be pulling, separating them and mm -hmm. just pull her, tell her to go. Then he will come back and just like walk fast mm -hmm. after I pull her up the block. And he will come back and pinch her, leave her bruises on her arm. So were, were just you guys around? Were any adults around to see? Did anybody no, step it was in like, to help? No, go. not at all. Mm -hmm. Nobody said nobody at all. And there were other people around. Yeah, like yes. we told her, her father. Mm -hmm. Her father said if the next time he'll see, he'll come out and say something to her. Mm -hmm. But now they don't talk anymore because she mm -hmm. realized. He's full of it. Mm. So, Susha, Ayana, what about language? Do you have male friends or have you witnessed male friends speak to females a certain way or have you had an experience yourself? Well, I had an experience um, called the B word, but mm -hmm. it wasn't by a guy, it was, called by, it was um, by a girl. Mm -hmm. um, it, I didn't take it very lightly. I was young at the time. Um, I wasn't in high school, but now that I'm in high school, I see 
girls calling other girls the b-word so it's not really that big of a deal to some people mm -hmm. to be called the b-word some people answer to it like it's really nothing mm -hmm. so it's not that big of a deal anymore mm -hmm. it's important also to recognize that um domestic violence with teens occurs in not only heterosexual relationships but same-sex relationships as well um, sometimes there's a lot of focus on more on the heterosexual relationships but same sex they have uh, very similar problems mm -hmm. Susha, have you had any experiences verbally? Well, I have friends that some of them are very aggressive. Mm -hmm. But I'm the type of person that once as you, I'm put in a certain situation that I feel uncomfortable, I will tell you off, honestly. Mm -hmm. Or I will try to speak to you calmly. And if I see that you don't take it upon yourself to listen to what I'm saying, that means you don't want a relationship, obviously, a friendship or anything. Mm -hmm. So if you can't listen to what I have to say, I don't want to listen to you either. Okay. Here are some, Jacqueline, here are some more statistics that we have. Teen girls face relationship violence three times more than adult women. 25% of victims say they have been isolated from family and friends. More than half of victims say they have compromised their own beliefs to please a partner. Many teens think this is normal. Teens report dating abuse via cell phones is a serious problem. Cell phone calls and texting mean constant control for abusers. So one in three teens say they are text messaged 10, 20, 30 times in an hour by a partner keeping tabs on them. Uh, Jacqueline, talk to us about the cell phone and maybe text messaging mm -hmm. and abuser using that as a way to control their girlfriend. Yeah, absolutely right, because it gives them access 24-7 mm -hmm. to the girlfriend um, if it is a if, um, victim is a girl. And this is the way that they control you. This is the way that they know where are you, what are you doing, who are you talking to and uh, can always keep tabs on you. So the texting, um, although it has a lot of advantages, in this scenario it can be very, it can be used as a tool to control you, to be able to find out where you are and what you're doing. Mm -hmm.